Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. This morning, I'd like to take you on a journey. I want to caption Forgetful Avenue in Jealousy County. And my mind goes back to the story of Saul, King Saul, and David. There are some interesting intricacies in their relationship that, 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 that makes me wonder. Now, the first one was when Saul was demonized after the rejection of God in 1 Samuel chapter 16, 15 to 23, when Samuel, uh, Saul was demonized, there was an evil spirit. The Bible says there was an evil spirit that tormented him and he was having depressions and all of those other things. They requested for a boy. They requested for somebody who was skilled in playing the harp and David was brought in. So it was David who came in and the Bible says as David ministered, Saul was relieved from his depression or from his demonic uh, attacks. So David became a source of respite for um, Saul or the music or the worship of David became a source of respite for uh, Saul's uh, malaise, or his sickness, demonic um, attacks or whatever it is. So David was somebody that had been good to Saul. He was good to Saul in that he came in at Saul's very down moments, depressing moments, valley moments, and he ministered to Saul. It was a blessing. Then came Goliath. David also went out and removed the shame of Saul because the Bible says that Goliath came and Goliath was a giant. And whilst the whole of Israel was terrified of Goliath, Saul was also terrified of Goliath. And I can always say, and I would always say, the battle between Goliath and the Israelites was not even tailor-made for David. It was tailor-made for Saul. Because Goliath was a giant. And Goliath, I mean, when a giant comes to town, another giant must meet him. And Saul was described in 1 Samuel chapter 9 that from his shoulder upwards, he was taller than the whole of Israel. So Saul was a giant too among the Israelites. In 1 Samuel chapter 9, 1 Samuel chapter 10, Saul was described as a giant amongst the people of Israel. That was Saul. So you can just imagine in the whole of, if a giant comes to town, another giant must stand up to him. But Saul was also cowering in fear. And the fear of Saul or the, or the, or the, the, the shame of, of, of Saul was removed by the appearance of David. And even Saul tried to put his armor on him as a dress like me, you know. So David, was a shame remover for, for Saul. So in two ways, David to the rescue of Saul, in two ways. His demonic, his personal internal battle, and then his external battle. David won those battles for Saul. Now here's the interesting thing. When the people of Israel, the women of Israel sang in 1 Samuel chapter 18, when they sang the song of David and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousand. The Bible said Saul took a spear and began to, to throw spears at David. Spears of jealousy. His jealousy got the better of him. Jealousy made him forget all the good things that David had done for him. Are you aware that sometimes jealousy doesn't even make us think about the good things that person might have done for you. That the person has been good to you. That the person has done this, has done that, has done that. But because you are living on Jealousy Avenue or Jealousy Boulevard, in, you are, you are living, you are living in forget, the, uh, 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 the Boulevard of Forgetfulness in Jealousy County. You, 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 you are ensconced in jealousy. You are living in the cave of jealousy. You forget that the person to whom you are attacking or saying things about that person has been good to you before. And sometimes that's what we do. 
we forget because jealousy clouds our judgment and, 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 and jealousy blights our memory and jealousy wipes away the traces of good that person might have done to you. No wonder Jesus said, don't cast your pearls before swine. Lest they trample upon it. And when they trample upon it, 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 it means nothing to them. And then in the end, turn and devour you. There are people who live in Jealousy County. And the road on which they live is called the road of forgetfulness. They've forgotten every good thing that has been done for them. Sometimes when you are you trapped in the sea of jealousy, or sometimes when the waves of jealousy seek to drench you or seem to, to overpower you, think of some of the good things that person might have done for you. Think of some of the good things. Don't walk into the unreasonable arena of jealousy. It doesn't work. Well, Forgetful Boulevard or Forgetful Avenue in Jealousy County is a choice we make either to stay there or not. As for me, I'll leave that place. See you later.